This morning, a potentially dangerous situation is developing in a small eastern Ohio community just outside Pittsburgh after a train derailment over the weekend. Now, a toxic threat, part of the wreckage containing hazardous materials at risk of a possible explosion that officials say could hurl harmful fumes and deadly shrapnel as far as a mile away. Multiple small explosions caused a massive fire after at least 10 cars believed to be carrying hazardous materials derailed. But overnight, officials are expressing even more concern, saying a temperature change to one of those rail cars is creating the possibility of a dire scenario. We've had a drastic change in the chemical uh, inside the tank cars of vinyl chloride. Um, we are at a uh, risk now of a catastrophic failure. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine is now creating a one-mile evacuation zone, ordering some 2,000 people to leave the area. It's kind of crazy for a small town like this. As of last night, the governor said an estimated 500 residents remained in the one-mile zone, warning that those with children who stay could be arrested for not complying with the urgent evacuation notice. We're at the point where um, we need you to leave. Um, there could be possible charges if you choose to stay. Federal investigators are on the scene trying to determine what caused the derailment. The crew did receive an alarm from a wayside de defect detector shortly before the derailment indicating a mechanical issue. Then an emergency brake application initiated. As officials work to minimize the dangers of the derailment, they say air quality and the water supply remain safe. We are not aware of any elevated readings that would we would anticipate to have impact to human health. Once the scene is safe and secure, the NTSB investigators will begin their on-scene work. NTSB officials spoke publicly for the first time since flames broke out late Friday night. They say 50 cars were involved in a derailment that resulted in flames and plumes of smoke that could be seen for miles. At this time, we are working to, ver to verify which hazardous material cars, if any, have been breached. 20 of the cars contained hazardous materials, 14 of them vinyl chloride, a cancer-causing carcinogen commonly used in PVC in packing peanuts. When it burns, it gives off, it changes itself and it gives off hydrogen uh, chloride gas, phosgene, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, all those wonderful you know, chemicals. Air monitor tests show readings for the chemical in the immediate area of where the derailment happened. However, it's the byproducts of these chemicals Severio believes need to be tested for. That's just one of the hazardous materials that were on board. The others have not been identified. Then there's groundwater. These people are using these streams and waters to feed their, you know, their, their livestock, water their fields. A lot of them probably have well water in the outlying areas. If this stuff gets into the sinks into the ground, you know, into the water table, it could be bad. What are we doing to do that, to solve that? Mayor Trent Conaway says the drinking water system has not been affected, but groundwater has. And as for the rail line company... From my experience, Norfolk Southern's number one goal is to get the rail line open because they're losing millions of dollars for every hour that that rail line shuts down, depending on how busy it is. Which is why Caggiano says the people of East Palestine need to hold their feet to the fire to ensure a total cleanup is done. In the meantime, the mayor tells me East Palestine will still be under an evacuation notice for at least the next 24 hours as the fire continues while crews and investigators remain on standby. At the Family Assistance Center Norfolk Southern set up in East Palestine, people who paid in cash and fled the 50-car train derailment say they don't have receipts for everything they bought or paid for, which is required when they were ordered to evacuate on Friday. With renewed calls for those within a one-mile radius to leave, there will be more expenses and more hassles. This morning we had uh, Salem cops uh, come knocking on the door about 10 o'clock, basically saying due to the wind, and obviously the, the hazardous materials, they were concerned that there was going to be more explosions and they wanted everybody to basically evacuate within the war zone. Finding hotels and motels in Ohio, Pennsylvania and West Virginia close to East Palestine is difficult. Fewer taken pets, which are like family. I just know we have two dogs and we have to take them to a hotel and they're going to be miserable.
we're going to be miserable. Yes. A landlord asks what's being done to help the elderly, disabled, and folks on fixed incomes with no way to pay cash up front or who don't have a credit card to rent a room away from the potentially toxic burning chemicals. He's helping his tenants but emphasizes there are many others who need help. They're on fixed incomes. Some of them are limited to how far they can travel because of their physical and health issues. So it's really put the community in a, a real uh, pickle to say. Others say it's time for Norfolk Southern to get into this century and pay with Venmo, Cash App, and in other ways, since they say no one will cash the handwritten reimbursement checks Norfolk Southern has issued from this help center. No one from Norfolk Southern's help center or corporate communications responded to my questions. We're reaching out to state and federal lawmakers to find out what they can do to help folks who needed a helping hand three days ago but are still waiting. With more local news, I'm Janet Rogers.